Um, I would like to introduce the next panel. Uh, creativity in challenging fundamentalism and defending secularism. And the chair for this... And the chair for this uh, panel is Jenny Wenhammer, artist, art teacher, and the founder of Feminine in Sweden. Give it up, please. Do, do, do. Oh, it's working. Oh, well, thank you to Adrian who borrowed me a watch because <laughs> I'm the time optimist that is supposed to keep the time here. That's, um, that's a challenge. And we will talk about our challenges too. Do you hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay. So. I guess by now you are all convinced what's bad about fundamentalism. But maybe there is someone who is not convinced. And anyway, there are some billions who are not convinced. So we need to find forms of how we can change their perspective. And. Um, this panel is here to talk about creativity in doing so and to find steps from this is so bad and this is so wrong to what can I do to make a change. To go from the facts of fundamentalism to the funny house with mirrors that distort dogmatic views and provoke the provocable and challenge them to find what? Mm. I want to thank uh, an earlier panel today that brought up um, the consequences for, for the, the ones suffering from fundamentalism. And I have noticed uh, while talking to my panel that we have all made a lot of creative activities already and we are kind of tired, we have been sick and I think that was a very important panel to, to discuss it, so it's addressed. But I wanted to have this with you that it's a, it's a hard battle so this is what you say in French, guerrier, le repousse de guerrier. Repos de la guerrière. Guerrière. And um, the, it's, it's like a rest to be here with you, with all of you. And I have also suffered a lot as feminine activist of losing job, losing my home, uh, losing my heart that stopped working and also losing my self-confidence in that way of being so pushed away from society. And I'm not the only one here that's ostracized in my country and from many panels. So, in the name of being tired and bringing in some science, there is some science about yawning, and that yawning brings us all together. So let's do some big yawning now. Oh! Oh! Come on, the yawning. Oh. 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 Are you feeling more together now? Yes. There is, there is actually science that this brings us together. 
and that it also makes you open to switch your mind into something new. And, um, well, first of all, I just wanted to say also thank you to all of you. We've been waiting all these years since Amsterdam in the Baile. And it was, I think nobody mentioned it, so I want to say how fantastic it was, the, the finishing uh, session we had there. Uh, it was really touching for all of us who were there. And I want to say that I really miss Shabana, who was there, who was supposed to be here, but who is really, really fighting hard right now uh, with cancer, and she's in a new uh, treatment that is like the latest of science coming to Germany to see if she can survive pancreas cancer. I don't know if Armin is here. Yeah, I remember she, she lifted you. <laughs> the way she lifted the mullah in Norway before. Uh, I also want to say uh, that I miss Inna Shevchenko, who was supposed to be here. And I will read a message from her soon. I want to say uh, uh, thank you to uh, Sami, who had patience with me for half a year. <laughs> And to Mariam, that I think most of us are here because it's Mariam that is organizing all this from what she built up. said like never again right before this started <laughs> because you were so tired and then when we all come we get all this energy from meeting and it's so fantastic to meet and Betty you just said like 15 minutes ago like never again I'm <laughs> doing this panel thing <laughs> you've been so worried about how it's gonna work out but you know we do it and that's, I think, what's defined many of us. We just do it, even if it's difficult. So, Betty from Morocco is here, uh, like the most known face of atheism in, in Morocco, and very much not welcomed by, by the others that should be on her side in Morocco. And uh, she's the one that will do a little a uh, longer presentation of her background in Morocco soon. Uh, and then Ahmed, I mean, I never forget, I see it in front of me, the picture that you so actively are always posting on, on Facebook and Instagram, smiling photos of you, but there was one when you had tried to suicide. And and that picture is like with me, and that's why I think it's so, such activism and such a resistance that you're always smiling on your photos, because just the act of smiling in the face of fundamentalists, in, this, in the face of people wanting to kill you, just that smile on a photo is activism. And one of those photos uh, has led to a trial with Facebook. Yes. yes, that you won. Yes. And a lot of death threats. So the gay kiss uh, with the pride flag, <laughs> Mecca. And the other one in the photo is Mohammed Nufal, Mohammed Hisham. <laughs> if you have not seen the video on YouTube when he's in an Egyptian TV show, uh, representing someone thinking in the artist way, in the scientific way, and getting a rage from the TV host that throws him out. And Mohammed is just this 
peaceful, sweet, looking so surprised almost at what's happening with the humanity when they throw him out. And, um, well, you will tell more, but he's, I think, the less confrontative of our activists here. Um, so there are different ways that you can still make a big change. And uh, Nadia, oh, yes. film director, screenwriter, also a warrior that's been going on for long, known for the film Laicite, Inshallah. And uh, I have recently seen uh, the film that was showing after you made Laicite Inshallah, the reactions and that you got cancer in the same time, that you were bald and people were smearing you so much. The Islam is always using these really low tactics of attacking your the way you look and, and all this. And I think that film for me was even stronger. Mem pa mal. Yeah. yeah. It was shown for the first time in Cologne in a festival. <laughs> and there is here uh, Carl and um, um, Krista. And uh, it was the premiere mondial in Cologne. I never forget, you know, after the projection when the people get out. Aww. And Mariam, like you said yesterday when you presented Richard Dawkins, <laughs> you don't really need a presentation. <laughs> but uh, for me, my first uh, feminine um, demonstration ever, uh, topless in the street, was together with Farid Arman and other Iranians. And uh, it was for Amina when she came out in Tunisia with her photo, um, My Body Is Not Your Honor. And she was um, put into uh, virgin test and forced Quran reading and they said she was mentally sick and then she was in, hus in, in prison for four months, but they wanted to keep her there for nine years. And we were protesting during half a year and that's how Femen and Mariam Namosi that was the first initi initiation of us doing a lot of activism together. So uh, that's how Mariam has been um, an important part of my life this last decade. But also, yeah. <laughs> but also I want to say that the, the one person that was in between was Ina Shevchenko and um, she's also been very important for for us, for the changes that we have done through our activism. And uh, she's not here, because uh, there's a war in Ukraine and it's tough for her, but she sent a message that I will read. And... Uh, Slava Ukraina! Slava Ukraina! I was thinking, if, if I stand up, does that... Yes, it works? I'm already getting, uh, I'm already bad with my timekeeping. <laughs> uh, Ina's speech. To Mariam, to Betty, to Nadia, to Jenny, to Mohammed, to Ahmed, and to all the rebellious apostates or curious supporters of the cause in the room. I regret I'm not there to hear your powerful voices and to feel your fighting spirits. Since six months, Russia is waging war against my country, Ukraine. And it's not by accident that the Russian Orthodox Church publicly supports this war that aims to destroy Ukraine, to destroy the innocent civilians and the democratic world with them. Organized religions have rarely missed an opportunity to embrace violence and create chaos in the world. They are at the rendezvous this time as well. This war has brutally affected my family and the close ones and it also affected my spirit. While the violence that extremists, political or religious, are capable of, it's not new to me. 
it's the disillusionment in the democratic world that is just too painful to take for an activist who have always believed and fought for its values. If you paid attention, you would notice that many of my fellow liberals and many on the left who often hesitated to condemn or even dare to justify the act of violence committed by the religious extremists and the attack on Salman Rushdie, the last one among them, the very same people hesitate to condemn or even just like the far right dare to justify Putin's criminal regime and its atrocious attack on Ukrainian people. There are many reasons I couldn't be there with you today, but the most important of them probably is the disillusionment. Yes, I've often been accused of naivety, yet I'm still not embarrassed by my naive and utopian worldview. I'm embarrassed by the cynicism of those in the West who enjoy freedoms but are too afraid to defend and fight for them when the urgency comes. You, my fellow apostates and dissidents, know the high price of freedom and you also know the danger and fear and hesitation to stand for the right thing. Despite the dissolutions and the occasional feeling that we've been losing our fights against the fanatics, we can't give up precisely because the price of such loss would be too high. The consequences of losing two fundamentalists would be unbearable to live with. Even if we can't win against them, and that's what I often feel, the answer is to continue the resistance because we still have a lot to fight for. Well, they have nothing to live for. So promise me we won't stop. <laughs> You're never giving up, witch Ina. So my hope is that people can change from what they are born into, forced into, what they have taught, what they are taught, to new thoughts. And this is where creativity is key. Thinking out of the box, asking why, why not, what if. At its heart, any creative process is about discovering something new within ourselves and the bringing of, what something, of that something into the world for others. And now I'm catching up with Betty Lashgar. So, I love to see a father activist here. And Betty's father was also a political activist. Uh, Said Lashgar died 2008. He was a political activist and he thought to Betty this important lesson that resistance is not about numbers, but about impact. And one year later, Betty started the alternative movement for individual liberty in Morocco, Mali, year 2009. And, within, and with just a few friends, made a big impact when doing and eating a picnic, picnic during Ramadan, which attracted lots of policemen, media and debate. So, Please give up a big applause for Betty Lashgar. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> so, um... I'm here to share my story <laughs> in a few minutes. So, yes, at the beginning, of my, my activism story actually, uh, began with the, the article 222 of uh, the Moroccan Penal Code. Um, this article, I will re read it. Whoever, while notoriously known for their membership in the Muslim religion, ostensibly breaks the fast in a public space during the time of Ramadan without grants permitted by this religion is punishable by imprisonment of one to six months. So yes, uh, my first action with Mali 
uh, was to organize in 2009 a picnic during Ramadan to condemn this article, this draconian article, actually. And uh, I founded Mali in um, this year. But um, let's talk a minute about Morocco, because a lot of people do not know what exactly um, Morocco is. Um, so Morocco is an absolute monarchy of divine rights. Uh, the King Mohammed VI has complete control and his right to rule comes uh, directly from Allah. He is the commander of believers, the descendant of the Prophet. So laws are based on Sharia. Uh, and the constitution defines Morocco as a Muslim state and Islam is the state um, religion. So it's important to know all this, like uh, the king is like a pope, actually. So back to the picnic, 2009, um, the famous picnic. So Mali was created. Mali is a civil disobedience movement. Yeah, civil disobedience movement. <laughs> a feminist, universalist, and laic. So laic, not secularist. But Nadia will explain that uh, better than me later. <laughs> Um, we organized and we organize a provocative campaign, action, happening, artistic performance to fight for women's rights, individual liberties, uh, freedom of conscience, um, sexual and reproductive rights like uh, uh, abortion rights, uh, against homophobia, um, sexual rights, etc. Uh, we fight against social hypocrisy and religious inquisition um, and Islamic fascism, actually. Uh, and, of course, against uh, the patriarchal and misogynistic system. So, um, maybe I can uh, share with you uh, some campaigns and uh, action later. But to give you some examples or some ideas. Um, we organized campaigns and action against um, the patriarchal myth of female virginity and against virginity testing. So uh, the first campaign in the MENA region was in 2008. Uh, our campaign was My Vulva is Mine. So it was a big, big scandal. And with the vulva, you know, it's uh, very taboo. Um, in 2021, last year, we and uh, Mariam, you know this uh, this campaign. We create like a um, fake website with a box and like to uh, how to say it. Uh, if you believe in uh, the, the in virginity, you can uh, go to this um, website, and you have uh, like a bed sheet and uh, a lot of material uh, to um, to use. Uh, um, like, uh, yeah, for no. Uh, or for not know, like uh, people will believe that you, well, people, the husband actually, will believe that you are a virgin. So it was last year, but this year we 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 did an, we did another campaign. So it's an illustrated book. Uh, so I have it uh, here, but in French. Mariam, I don't know if you have the English version. Uh, no problem. So, but you can find it online because uh, there is a, a ebook on the website. So. I guess. Okay. So, to fight against this, uh, and I think this year you also have a trial coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. So I can, yeah, I can share with you a lot of uh, actions and uh, and happenings. But in 2017, during the during uh, November 50, 25th the International Day Against Male Violence Against Women. We, we colored in red the water of uh, fountains in Rabat. And uh, so the authorities um, published um, press release against us and 
personally against me, saying that Morocco is a state of freedom of expression, but they don't believe in this form of expression. So I, yeah, I am um, prosecuted, yeah, and uh, I, I ask to postpone my trial, and so I have the, the trial this on September 20, 29th. So, yeah. Yes, <laughs> we will support you all from social media helping, supporting, good. And uh, <laughs> I think that was an applause for you helping to support also. Good. And thank you, Betty. And um, on the topic, of creativity in challenging fundamentalism and defending secularism. I would like to hear some words from you, Mariam. Um, thank you. Hi, everyone. I would like to say that I think we should go to Morocco on September 29th. Whoa. Yes. Who's coming? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to, we have to try and support Betsy on social media, of course, but we should also be there if we can. Um, so let's make that pact here right now, uh, that we will try to do that. Uh, on the topic of creativity, um, I guess there's so much to say. Um, I did a talk about this actually uh, for TEDx, which was censored for a year and then my slides were censored and there was a trigger warning that it would be distressing for people to have to listen to a 10 minute talk that I gave. Um, and I think the point I made is that um, what else do we have? What else do dissidents from Islam, free thinkers, what else do we have in order to tell our stories, to say that we exist, and to say that we have rights, the right to be here, the light, right to live without fear, the right to blasphemy and apostasy? They have violence. They have fear, they have threats. Um, it's constant, it's unrelenting, it's unrelenting. And all we have, if we don't want to mirror that horrible, disgusting, inhuman movement and ideas, all we have is our expression. And an expression that is the mirror opposite of theirs. One that brings hope, one that brings courage, one that makes people laugh, brings joy, um, because they want us to be afraid. They want us to be silent. And I think creativity is such a wonderful way, I find the most wonderful way, in order to be able to bring our message, raise our voices, and most importantly, open up the space for others to feel that they can join us. Uh, a great example at this very conference, Marching on the streets for Salman Rushdie, it's a difficult thing to do. And many people are afraid to do it. But when you do it with creativity, with music, with it brings hope, it brings courage. And I think that is the key for me, you know, this, this idea that um, we can challenge the most sacred, the most taboo, and do it um, in a way that uh, gives people um, a way to reimagine a new world, a world where um, you know, their threats and their violence and their darkness is not, does not have the last word, as Pragna Patel says. We will have the last word because of many of the ways in which we fight for these rights. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Nadia, do you want to continue on the same topic? Well, <laughs> well. It's difficult, you know, <laughs> after Mariam, because, she, you know, she says everything, and she resumes at the end, and she makes the conclusion, and, you know, <laughs> and she organized all this. And yesterday, yeah, I, I follow you uh, all the time. You give me a lot of energy, Mariam. You cannot imagine. No, no, <laughs> really. But, you know, what can I say? You know, I, I, I can speak about censorship, censorship yeah, yeah, in, in, for me, you know, because since I made this movie, 
La Cité, inshallah, it's the title in France because they were afraid about the uh, neither Allah nor Master, you know. And uh, they were afraid because in Tunisia they brought the, the destroyed this cinema because of the movie. And they said, we cannot release this movie in France uh, with this title, you know. So we change. It was the first time in my life that I decide, okay, I accept to change the title because if not, the movie will be not released, you know, in France. So for me, it's a censorship, this. And okay, uh, for the first time uh, I told you I, I did not disobey, but um, now since I can say six years, I'm fighting to find financement for my project, and I didn't find them, you know. And I think it's another censorship, you know, economic in cinema. Uh, economic censorship, it's also a big censor because I write movies, uh, but feature film, uh, not documentaries, and I didn't find money to make them. So now the future project is a comedy, so I hope with humor, you know, I can, uh, find more <laughs> financement, but you know, I'm I'm a filmmaker. I I, I don't know how to to express myself uh, in another way than making movie. You know, so I made movies without money, and I try to m put them on uh, not Facebook but YouTube and everything. But I don't believe about that. You know, because I think to to raise a lot of people, we we need also the work of the critics, the work of the media, the work of uh, being together watching the film too in an, in a theater and everything so what can i say i'm just continue fighting you know to make my movies now but you know also struggle movie of course thank you nadia <laughs> mohammed you have came here in the middle of your exams i'm curious to hear <laughs> what you want Hello. to say yeah this functions good this functions um, okay, I think creativity is really important because it offers an alternative for the fundamental systems that exist right now. And through creativity, we can also reach the public, we can grab their attention, and that is also important. And um, for that reason, I think creativity is like our engine. People with charisma and creativity, they are driving our values and our way of life. They, they are our hope, somehow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ahmed, I know you were trying to get out of social media, but then they go attack uh, Salman Rushdie, and it's just never possible to take a break, kind of. But you're needing it, so let me know how, how you're, what you're thinking about all this process of creativity and fundamentalism. Hello. First, uh, it's nice to be here. It's amazing, lovely to see you all. Many of you I know only through Facebook um, since many years. Um, sorry, could you um, <laughs> repeat the question? No, I mean, there will be questions to you later. So it was just if there was something you wanted to say on the topic now. If not, we can just move on. Um, we can just move on. We just move on. <laughs> Betty, do you want to tell something more about which actions you made? In the name of creativity. <laughs> so, no? Hello? It's uh, I thought, oh, that's great. Maybe. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is uh, so many, but I will try to... Keep it short. <laughs> no, to, no, to share like uh, two or three or... Yeah, for example, in 2012, we invited an um, uh, NGO from uh, Netherlands, Women on Waves. And so it's, um, it's about uh, abortion. So we organized a big uh, demonstration, big happening, um, uh, an action to decriminalize abortion. Abortion is illegal in Morocco. And uh, to make known safe abortion with abortion pills. So. Uh, since 2012, 10 years, we help women in Morocco, even 
if it's risky and forbidden with abortion pills and I do it publicly. So this action was really important to open a debate about abortion rights. Uh, in 2013, I organized a kissing because two teenagers were uh, detained, uh, 14 years old, because of uh, mm, they posted a, a pic on, fix on Facebook picture, a uh, photo on Facebook. Uh, and so they were detained, so we organized a big uh, kissing in Rabat, the capital, in front of the parliament. So it was very dangerous. And yeah, of course, we were uh, um, assaulted by some people there. But um, after that, so we, the, the, the teenagers were. Um, yeah, thank you very much. So it's it was a victory actually. Um, um, big campaign in 2016 because we have actually we have like um, provocative slogans uh, uh, as well. Like in Morocco, there is a lot of uh, taboos, so we try to break taboos and and talking about sensitive um, issues, you know. So in 2016, we uh, um, launched a big campaign uh, for sexual liberties and uh, um, uh, homosexuality because uh, it's forbidden. So the name of the campaign was Take Judges Out of Our Panties. And we, we sent uh, our posters to um, the majority of uh, ministers in, uh, in uh, Morocco and last last example in 2019 uh, in a demonstration in support of a journalist um, condemned for having sexual intercourse before marriage because it's forbidden as well and um, illegal abortion i had a big sign in this demonstration with um, uh, writing uh, written on it yes i have a sexual life and i aborted uh, dot freedom so it was like uh, the big scandal of the year. And an Islamist deputy uh, launched a big campaign against me on social media. Let's be honest, he's funny. The campaign was, if only, I don't know if the translation is good, but if only your mother had aborted, is it okay? <laughs> yeah. So it was like, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it was uh, difficult because uh, because of um, cyber violence, and um, I don't know if you uh, if you know the. I don't know if I have it in English, but uh, there is an international uh, like union of uh, Muslim scholars. You, you know this institution. Yeah, founded in two thousand four. And uh, the president, um, so they they vote, so they change the president. But this year, in 2019, it was a Moroccan president. I, I think he's the current president. And um, he declared that I'm too ugly to have sexual intercourse, whether it is illicit or licit. So it was... Uh, very difficult because it was at the same time. Um, so this is uh, some actions and some examples of what I'm doing. Thank you. Just one, just one thing. Since this just this year or two years ago, I have a lot of uh, shows with a lot of messages in English, in French, and in Arabic. And in Morocco, I'm like. Uh, walking around with uh, my shirts and um, taking my pictures in front of mosques or symbolic uh, institutions. And we paint um, on walls some messages. So like two months ago, I, I had a um, t-shirt in front of a mosque in Rabat with um, against abortion, have a vasectomy. And we paint a wall in front of an Islamic institution, very important one uh, in Arabic. It was uh, abortion is sacred. So this is some examples in Morocco. And on Thank your you. sweater. <laughs> Allah is lesbian.
Can we, can we have a big applause for consensual sex? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some quick, really quick questions. And uh, as you noticed, I'm not good at timekeeping and not at good at mathematics neither. So you will have to like share this yes and no signs. Oh. Uh, you don't have to answer uh, if you don't want to. You can grab onto the same yes as your partner or the same no. You can answer yes and no uh, if you don't feel that there is a clear yes or a clear no. It's just a little quick to position yourself uh, ahead of the questions that will come from you. I want you to uh, just remember that um, fundamentalism is a type of conservative religious movement with strict conformity to holy texts, while creativity brings in the new and trust in change. Fundaliz fundamentalism conserves the old, has a fear of change and trust in God or Allah. So, um, again on the topic, like I said before, of changing the perspective, before we go on with questions, can you all move place? Just to feel the being in someone else's shoes. You don't need to walk far, you can just uh, change with your neighbor and stretch your legs a little bit and <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you want? No, I can't because of the signs. <laughs> the signs. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I, as a um, studying behavioral scientism, I th a science, I think it's really uh, important that uh, we can put ourselves um, also in the shoes of the fundamentalist and like try to see what do we have in ourselves that can be changed or that we can uh, still be less dogmatic about. And um, well, these questions are not a big thing. Because the bigger ones that will come later when, when you will make questions soon, like try to remember to keep in the frame of uh, the forms of resistance, why creativity is key, what's its impact, why is defense of secularism important for creativity, does secularism have to mean anti-religion, and the first question to you is, does secularism have to mean anti-religion, yes or no? Oh, sorry, they are like, the. if you have the stick towards you, it, the text will get on the right side. It's all very upside down here now. You have the stick to you, and then the text will get right up, sorry. So, I'm getting no's. All right. Uh, are you an Islamophobe? Da -da 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 -da. It's even even if you don't answer, it's also uh, an answer. It shows that it's some it's open for discussion. Uh, are you a Muslimophobe? No. Are you afraid when you do your activism or art against uh, fundamentalism? Are you afraid when you do your activism or art? Afraid. afraid. <laughs> Would, <laughs> would uh, you do your creativity in challenging fundamentalism if you didn't uh, feel or think that you have to because someone has to do it? Like, like, would you, like, would you prefer to do something else and go on the beach and just take it easy? Or would you, would you still, yes? Okay, again, would you, do your, would you do your creativity in challenging fundamentalism 
if you didn't feel or think that you have to do it because someone has to do it? Would, would you do it if you didn't feel that you have to do it? No. no. <laughs> but do you love doing it? No. Do you love doing it? Give me the yes. Give me the yes. Yes. You love doing it. Uh, do you feel that it empowers you? Yes. Yes, I want to see the yes signs. <laughs> yes. If it's true, no. Good, good. I want honesty more than anything. Uh, and the last one, do you feel that it empowers others? Do you feel that it empowers others? All right. <laughs> oh, it's it's so funny that you write that because I was just uh, if we had more time I would hint to to Jimmy because you speak about the fragile um, Islamist, you speak about the megalomanic uh, creative person, and I as a feminist I see very much the discussion about narcissist men, and when I was looking at the description of a narcissist man, I noticed that it's quite a description of an uh, Islamist. And in this grandissement, one of the things that you should do to deal with these narcissist people, because they really can't help it, like it's really hard for them to change, uh, is to flatter them. But what we are doing is provoking. So is it the right way? Or should we just flatter them more? Bring up your questions. I'm so sorry, um, but I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely surprised that when the question was, uh, "Are you not afraid?" Some of you put up a no, um, and I think you know, given what's just happened with Salman Rushdie, I remember when we marched in Gay Pride. Uh, I remember looking at the signs, thinking, "Shit, what the fuck is going to happen when we pick these up? Like, are we, are we going to get attacked? Are people going to spit at us?" So, you know, and and the fear isn't just for physical safety. I think somebody in the, one of the academics said being concerned about your job, losing your job. So there's so many different levels on which when I'm doing any of my activism, there's some presence of fear for me. And it's, uh, I guess, you know, courage is doing it in the presence of that fear anyway. So I, I just, I just wanna know how you've got no fear. Like, I'm, uh, I don't know how else to phrase that question. I think we collect some questions, and then you you pick up what you feel is uh, the most important uh, for you. Um, where do you want to go? Jenny, we're going to have a riot if you don't let us speak. <laughs> go riot. <laughs> Jenny, could you pick up who... The oh, oh no, I don't want to. Can Shall I do, I do that? that? <laughs> yes. All right, that's a difficult thing. All right. Who, who do you think is the most important group um, to reach? Is it, for example, the people sitting on the fence uh, on, the way to, on the way to leave the religion, for example? Take like more, more three questions. Can, can you manage that, Nadia? You don't one, need to answer all of them, Nadia. What? No, one. no, you uh, just pick the one that you find is important for you. <laughs> I can I can wait with it. I can wait with it. I can wait with it if if, if that's if that helps. But anyway, um so my question mostly is uh, because when we are handling the uh, subjects of leaving religion and the risks to our lives, um sometimes when you use creativity, as much as it is effective, it almost feels um uh uh, uh, taking it down a notch down um, so in that regard are we are we toning ourselves down I'm, I, I don't know if that question is clear I really hope it is uh, do you mean self-censorship or yeah, yeah in the 
I mean in the sense that when we use uh, humor and poetry and things like that, or, or a hidden message that we're not very direct with it, are we listening to the voices that we're told to tone down or um, are we going with it because it's very, very effective? I'm really hoping this question is clear. More questions or? Okay, one more. Uh, yeah, of course we need to have Victoria, oh, hi. the creativity <laughs> yeah. master. <Hello. laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, actually, what I wanted to do um, was uh, give some comments, if that's okay, just some quick ones because I think that's what Mario wanted. Is that cool? Because Sorry? it's you, you because it's you, you okay, have cool. special permission. Oh, bless you. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, the first thing, first of all, I'm sorry if I was like crying. I'm just so overwhelmed by this panel and I just love you all so much and I'll probably end up crying again. And uh, can we just have like a round of applause for this fucking panel because they're so amazing. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I wanted to do some comments on, um, on art and then I've got a, a super short poem. I don't know if there's any time. It's The Laughing Heart by Charles Bukowski, but I don't know if we're going to have time. Um, but yeah, firstly, um, I think art is there to confront and to question. And when you stifle art, you stifle the human spirit. And um, I think Jenny and I both know art and science, they share a common ancestor with the human imagination. Without that, there's no hypothesizing. Without what if, there's no discovery. Without experimentation, no advancement. And I believe art to be fundamental to human civilization. And that goes all the way back to the mixing of pigments for body paints uh, 500,000 years ago. Um, it was a precursor to formulating chemistry. It's raw creativity. It's brush paints and your imagination. And to me, body paint is pure courage, pure autonomy, and pure trust. And it comes from curiosity tenacity and need to make the world a better place and you need these to be a successful activist and until my last breath I will defend dissent freedom of conscience and expression Whoa, thank you Victoria can I, can I comment yeah, right. are we I guess we can continue with the answers now I say something? Sure. Just because I, I would like to say something, sorry, <laughs> on the panel before we go. You don't need to apologize, Maria. <laughs> um, can I just uh, make a couple of uh, points? Um, yes. <laughs> on, the, on the issue that Jimmy raised of uh, being afraid, I think, I guess the way to look at it is that, you know, when you get on a plane, you might be a little afraid that it's going to crash. I think we all have that feeling, but we still get on the plane and it doesn't paralyze us. And I think uh, that that is a very similar um, feeling. You know, you might be a little worried, particularly if you're an organizer, you're worried for those you organize more than for yourself. Uh, but in the end, you know that it has to be done, you have to be there, and you owe it to many people who can't. So in that sense, it's sort of a risk you take every day in your life. This is just another one, but it's a very meaningful one, and it's a really important one as well. Um, I, can I just also, um, th there was two other questions, if I can just respond and then I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. Uh, on the issue of uh, who we're trying to reach, I think uh, even though I hate religion and I hate the religious right, uh, I, I know there are many believers who are on our side and I think it goes back to the concept of laicite and the separation of religion from the state and we want everyone. but. Even though we want everyone, it doesn't mean that we can no longer uh, criticize religion because it will offend believers. Their religion offends me day in and day out. But I can still manage to work with believers. And even though passing a mosque makes me physically sick, I can still defend the right for people to have their mosques and to pray in it. All we're asking... All we're asking is for believers to do the same, have the same courtesy for us. You don't like what we say, that's fine. Uh, you know, go cry in a little room on your own if your sensibilities are so fragile. But recognize the fact that I have a right, just as much as you have a right, to talk your absurd, violent nonsense against women, against gay people, against minorities, and everyone else who doesn't agree with you. 
The final point I want to make is the point that Halima made, and are we toning it down? We're not. Listen, when we go to gay pride and say Allah is gay, I, I don't think anyone anywhere in the world will think we're toning things down. You know, but I think that um, we have to, because uh, what we say is so taboo, is so uh, such a challenge to the sacred and those in power that are killing day in and day out to silence anyone that challenges them. We have to find ways that will also make people smile. And I think that is, uh, I think Shabana Rehman, the wonderful comedian who can't be with us today because she's, she's not well, she says, someone who's laughing isn't afraid anymore. And I think it is about you know, using creative creativity to open up that space. A lot of ex-Muslims would not have marched at Gay Pride. They were afraid to march at Gay Pride. But they kept coming in larger and larger numbers because it was a creative way of saying something that means so much and is actually a matter of life and death to so many of us. So, when I'm afraid, I run away, you know? So I, I can't be afraid when I'm making anything. It, for me, it's something, it's reality. I mean, I, I can understand some people are afraid about something, but for me, it's not a reason to not doing something, you know? I just for, forget my, 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 how do you say, my afraid? No? My fear, you know? <laughs> and also, I think in my life, the adversity, it's something like oil, you know, for me, for my motor, you know. I, I like it, you know. Also, you can, the, the Islamists challenge me, you know, they want to kill me, they want to, to, to they want me to, to not speak anymore, to not making movie, so I will make more and more, you know. A lot of time, you know, <laughs> when when people, when journalists ask me, but why are you making this movie, you know? And I said, but why do you, don't you ask me why you are breathing, why you are eating, why you are making love, why you are, you know? I need this to feel in life. I need this. <laughs> and they, they believe, you know, there is paradise after death. So for them, you know, they are only here to wait for death, you know? And for me, you know, I think the paradise could be on the earth. So it's a difference, you know, between us. You don't have any mic? Oh. Okay, I, I, I'm just noticing that this is like a balance to the panel that was yesterday, <laughs> when it was uh, very many men and it was uh, talk about patriarchy. So, uh, if you guys want to say something. <laughs> you don't have any mics. Where are all the mics? No, you can speak, you know? Uh, we have some mics back. They took our mics away also. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to comment about fear and I wanted to say a really small story. When I was new in Germany, uh, they did put me in the same room with an ISIS supporter. Um, this person discovered my identity through internet uh, and then the hell, hell doors broke loose so I had to sleep with a knife under my pillow. And the, and the city wouldn't do some, anything about it. And fear, fear exists. On the, with me, fear is strong. Uh, but as, as Mariam has said, it should not stop us. Um, and that brings me to the next question, the groups. What, what important groups we should reach? Uh, I would say here in the West, we need to reach the politician. We need a better lobbying for us because they don't understand. <laughs> here in Germany, it was a surprise a couple of years ago for, for people who work in the authorities and so that atheists or ex-Muslims need to escape or are in danger even. And this bubble need to just, we need to trust that. We need to show them the reality of the situation. And to, 
Germany is a democracy, for example, so in order to reach the politician, we need to reach the people. And here also creativity is important because, yeah, how, how to reach the people without being interesting, for example. Um, yeah, and the second important group, I think, it would be in our lands, in our countries, in the Middle East, um, Muslim teenagers. Because teenagers, I think, they have strong... Um, strong desire for rebellion, sometimes a strong desire to change, and I think a lot of us did leave religion maybe in that age, in that period, as a teen, trying to discover the world and so. And these people should be, um, we, should, we should pay interest for them. And for example, um, there, was, there was a very, um, a very successful blogger in Egypt, his name is Shreve Gaber. This this guy is <laughs> yeah. Shreve Gaber managed to achieve in the Arab world a lot in terms of reaching young people. He was really effective, and now, unfortunately, his situation is really bad. He must hide, and he cannot even smuggle himself out of the country because he's so famous. They would kill him. The smugglers themselves would kill him. So it is it's a really desperate situation, and 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 here, here. I must also mention that creativity needs protection. Because if you're afraid, you cannot really truly be creative. And here, self-censorship self will come, that Halima did speak about. And, and we will maybe be afraid a little to, to say the things that we, that we should say, maybe. And, and that happens, and, and it's a normal consequence of, the of our, our reality in the Middle East, and so even now in the West. And the number of religious people are increasing uh, through immigration, and I can imagine that the situation would would get in the future um, not better. But I think there are people who would would disagree with me and would say the trends are ge are going the other way around. But yeah, we will see the future, and I'm I'm really um, yeah I'm excited about it. So yeah, that's. <laughs> Do you, want, do you want to say something, Ahmed? Um, to the question from Jimmy, um, of, uh, um, I myself personally also have fear, in it, fear when I do something, um, trying to show my message, get um, that, that, that I get an example for a few years ago, after a year after you um, in, in Council of Ex-Muslim uh, Britain did the last gay um, there um, a year after it and on the Christmas tree day in Berlin, I decide um, we can bring that also to Germany, why not in Berlin? So I decided to uh, print that on my t-shirt. Um, I posted on Facebook that I will be there on Christmas tree day um, to show solidarity also with, to the, with the LGBT people in the Muslim country. Um, I got really many death threats that I had uh, to spend also a whole weekend with uh, police protection. I also experienced violence in Germany from Islamists that I ended up in hospital. Um, received like death threats even from the Islamic State. Like the fearness always exists, but um, this isn't a reason that we stop and we have to show ourselves um, only that way we can change something. I need to fin we need to f cut, cut, cut. Oh, extra 10 minutes? No, 10 minutes. Ten minutes. We have 10 minutes? No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, um, it's, it's about uh, the fear. Um, personally, I'm never afraid, actually. Um, wh when, I, when I organize the uh, actions, huh? but uh, panels is different. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I, I think... Hopefully, I'm not afraid because I think if I was afraid, I will stop, really. Um, but I have a personal reason uh, because I share this reason um, uh, publicly. Um, when I arrived in France for my studies, because I was in Morocco, I, I was born in Morocco and I lived in Morocco, um, I, I got sick with a cancer and I was alone because my family was... Um, 
within Morocco. So it was actually my first fight or my first battle. And all my life and all my personality, I don't know, changed. And I think it's really the, the, the fundamental reason that now I, I, I really, I can say it, I'm never afraid. I, I don't know what it is, but it, it helps me in my uh, activism, actually, to be honest. Mm. We, I mean, I'm I'm uh, the worst timekeeper on world on the earth. So I already realized that we have extra minutes. I was go ahead. I'm um, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, one of the uh, in the panels, I was um, it was not something new. I heard it um, that that the Islam is un like unreformable. Um, and the Muslims can't be different, like this is their religion, that's how they are, that they're um, anti-LGBT and um, close-minded and everything. I have other experience. I know people, I know Muslims who are um, LGBT friendly um, and open-minded and all that. I find that very problematic when people are exactly fighting those people who are trying to be different. We have like always the expectation that the people get changed, getting open-minded, not being so aggressive, um, but telling them this is, they can't be different. Their religion saying they can't be. Or like um, liberal Muslim um, are mo even more dangerous than Islamists. I, I've been really shocked I heard that. Um, and the peop those people like facing that not only from um, non-believer, like European, also from ex-Muslim, being told that they can't be different um, than their religion. It's like unchangeable, like this is it. And that's why I, I see that a very big problematic um, that the people can, they don't get any chance to change. Um, they be like, it's your culture, it's like that and your religion. Yes, uh, th thank you for bringing this up because uh, I was going to comment on that. I've noticed from your uh, post on social media that you do have this uh, will in your activism to to find this meeting, not just the confrontation, the, the seeing each other, understanding each other. And I will give you the word, but I have one question that I kind of, well, actually have three questions that I've been getting from social media. So if you have time to answer it now, or if you can bring it with you and think about it and answer it in other ways with yourself, with people. Uh, this one is from uh, Harami, ex-Muslim. He would love to know more on how can we as fellow ex-Muslims work individually and collectively to increase support and resources for ex-Muslims, especially the ones who are unfortunately stuck and fear for their lives in Muslim countries. And then there are two ones from Swedish feminist friends that I'm not finding, but I remember them. One of them is, uh, how do you keep up your energy? And the other one is, on the topic that I would like to bring with us when we leave here, like what is your most hopeful thoughts for, for what we can do for the future? And I think I'm kind of finishing here and I will give you your, we give you the last words in the panel. Oh, there is one more question. Many questions. Oh, so many questions. <laughs> I have the mic, actually. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, thank you for being here, and uh, I love you, Ahmed. I love you. You are the guy who is clear in his sexuality, his gender identity, and yet is our ally. And you have shown it on so many platforms. You have done it on so many ways that even sometimes I'm like, wow, this guy rocks. Um, and you, you do actually. Uh, I have just uh, two things to say here. Uh, one is that fear is there, don't undermine it. But uh, if our ancestors were not afraid, 
if I may, uh, our ecologist Richard Dawkins, uh, we would not be here. They were afraid, they were cautious, and they were uh, actually gauging their next steps. That's why we still are here. Otherwise, the human race sitting like a duck would be gone away thousands of years ago or millennium. Uh, so fear is something that keeps us going and going and going and going and th making things better. And the other thing that please, 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 please never forget, regardless of your identities, whatever they are, we are part of this human family. Uh, my source of uh, your last question as well, if I may, uh, power is the uh, godchildren I have. So once I spend time with them, uh, I revitalize myself. And being a godmother gives me that energy to keep fighting. And I fight for them. Later, they could be gay. They could be trans, they could be atheists, they could be Muslims, they could be Christians. They can adopt anything they want. And right now, they are clean slates. But whatever they become in their lives, once they are on the streets, they should be not afraid of their lives. They should not be afraid for their lives that they would be killed just because who they are. I think that should be our goal, and we should never forget that we are a family. We are, we, we need people around us, and the people around us are we, and we are them. We are a family. Yes. Yes. It's like this, I kind of, uh, I kind of already closed the panel, and I feel that this that is going on here is like your uh, activism of uh, continuing. <laughs> but I think maybe we should respect the ones that are following. Uh, and uh, I hope you can stay here and keep on talking after. And if I will give the last word to someone, it will not be to the audience right now. It's if some of you feel that you want to really say some last word or if we are summing it up here. You want to say something? I love when you say something. Okay, I would say that really, really uh, fast. Uh, I, w I have to comment uh, about what Ahmed said regarding reforming Islam. I know it is... It is uh, a fight, a big fight, but I would just say something really fast. If some Muslim come, come and tell me, yeah, violence does not represent Islam, I would tell him, yeah, great, you're a great guy. But the problem is that, is that there is not no intellectual framework for Muslim, no intellectual, intellectual framework that, that translates the Quran peacefully. And we should have that. Okay, and then we would have a chance. We, we see churches that accept and bless the gay marriage now, and maybe that is against the f against a lot of uh, against th things in the Bible, and we can see that also by Muslims. But until now, there, was, there is not enough funding going in in realizing this this peaceful vision of Islam. There there are people who tries, but it's there are no really success. And I think we will not be able to eliminate Islam. It will exist, and it will outlive on us, all of us. I think so, and that is a realistic, realistic point of view. Okay, but we can tame it. We can contain it. It is possible. That that is it. And I I know it's not about creativity, but I had to say it. So so my hope is that those who are born. Uh, into Muslim families will uh, become our future free thinkers. Um, can, can I just go back to the topic of creativity um, and its importance? And I think, again, I just want to say that there are many ways of resistance. Um, but if your resistance is going to be non-violent, if it is going to be anti-racist, if it is going to be anti-sexist. Um, there is very few options available to you. You can speak, you can scream, you can write, 
um, you can sing, you can dance. Um, it, it all leads to creativity in one way or another. You say poems. Um, and I think that's why it's so essential because if we think about it, creativity is what makes us essentially human. And I think that's why it has such an effect on those who witness it or those who take part in it. Uh, because it takes us back to what it is to be essentially human. And it breaks a lot of the borders and boundaries and divisions from identity politics to national, religious, cultural divisions. So I think it is key. Um, and I agree fully that uh, this is a fight of believers and non-believers against the fight.